Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Winds of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is book number two in the Heroes of June miniseries. It's kind of a sequel to June and June Messiah. Comes after Paul of June as well. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb. I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say, at the time of filming, I'm only like 70 pages in, and it's 450-odd pages. So this is very much going to be like a reading vlog style thing as I update you as I go, you know? Dane reads. After the reign of Muad'Dib, an empire begins to crumble. Paul Muad'Dib, hailed as a hero, worshipped as a messiah, hated as a tyrant, has vanished into the endless deserts of the planet Dune, leaving his turbulent empire without guidance. Now it is up to his young sister Alia and his formidable mother, the Lady Jessica, aided by a handful of loyal allies, to keep humanity from tearing itself apart. Working with Princess Irul and Jessica tries to uncover the truth about her son. As the winds of rebellion and treachery brew, she discovers that Muad'Dib may have knowingly planted the seeds of his own downfall, and that the rebel Bronto of Ix has a secret mission of his own, one that will force Jessica to choose between the memory of her son and the future of the human race. So quite early on we get a reference to the winds of June uh, that the book gets its title from. What sort of future could they create for those infant twins? The winds of June, the, politi the politics and desert storms, could strip a person's flesh down to the bone. Gurney quotes a familiar saying, Those who do nothing but observe from the shadows cannot complain about the brightness of the sun. And speaking of quotes, so as with every June book, we get a lot of quotes at the start of each section, and I tend to quite like those. So we've got Princess Irulan from the Legacy of Muad'Dib draft manuscript, and she wrote, I write what is true about Muad'Dib, or what should be true. Some critics accuse me of distorting the fact and writing shameless misinformation. But I write with the blood of fallen heroes, painted on the enduring stone of Muad'Dib's empire. Let these critics return in a thousand years and look at history, then see if they dismiss my work as mere propaganda. And Paul quotes Thufi Hawat, who said, uh, Thufi Hawat told me that once you're aware of a threat, you've done half the work of defeating it. Oh, and then I thought this was cool. So the face dancers are members of the jongler troop, and uh, they go from planet to planet to entertain people. But um, they say basically, you know, the, the people, the punters, love it when the face dancers put on the face of a local politician. We get this great little bit of foreshadowing. So someone, uh, Sioto, says to uh, Paul, If you wish to do away with assassinations, young man, you'll have to change the face of the Imperium. Paul raised his chin. Perhaps one day I will. And Gurney Halleck from Unfinished Songs, he says, It is said that one can neither play nor hear the true beauty of music without first having experienced considerable pain. Alas, that may be why I find music to be so sweet. And this was cool as well, um, just this idea. I'm just going to read this paragraph out. Uh, so Gurney, he, he smelled fine sawdust in the clinging odour of sweet shellac. One ballast maker used tuning pegs carved from obsidian. Another advertised strings of silk braided around a thin thread of precious metal. A flamboyantly dressed man boasted that his frets and cavalers were made of human bone, authentic splinters from the skeleton of a great musician, who had offered his body for such a remarkable purpose so that he could keep creating music long after his death. And I like this, this quote from, um, I think it's Gurney. It's either Gurney or Duncan. We all need to be rescued at one time or another. It wasn't a familiar quote, but a nugget of his own wisdom. A quote from Earl Romber Vernius. Hatred should not be easy, nor forgiveness so difficult. And then this is from Ray and Var the Magnificent. While an audience is captivated by the show, they must, them, they must ask themselves, at whose expense is the entertainment derived? And then we have this big chunk here where I just didn't tab anything out. A Bene Gesserit axiom here. Knowledge is an impotent thing if a person refuses to believe. Bronzo of Ix. We are taught that patience is a virtue, but I have come to realise that it is also a weakness. More often than not, a thing must be done now. I'm kind of like that. Everything needs to be done now. And finally, from the Stilgar commentaries, and this is about the, the, the Fremen death cell. And I really like this because I enjoy the way that that um, we look at the, the use of water and the way that it's kind of treated in Fremen society. Outsiders call some of our procedures Fremen cruelties without understanding what we do. Consider the Huanri, the death still that enables our tribe to recover and save moisture from those who have died. On a planet where water is the most precious of all commodities, how can this possibly be called cruel? It is practical. So yeah, The Winds of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. I'm not gonna lie, I just don't find Paul Atreides to be that interesting of a character. Even in this point, he's kind of a bit of a top, well, he's, he's not even in this. It's kind of looking back on it on him after he's disappeared. But his legacy is he's somewhat of a tyrant um, and he's kind of set the wheels in motion to try and undo some of the damage that the religion in his name has caused. So that's kind of an interesting theme. I just don't care for Paul, I, I'm, you know. Um, and then Alia is just a right old bitch in this as well. Um, 
just like one of the worst people you could possibly imagine like Paul was bad when he was in power and then Ali is just even worse um, so yeah I mean it was okay the other thing it did is it did the same as the last one did um, Paul of June right it keeps jumping backwards and forwards between the past and the present and that just kind of annoyed me I feel as though they could have got two books out of this and just done one in the past and one in the present I think that might have worked better um, it would have taken considerable rewrites though and I understand why they did it this way it just it didn't work that well for me but yeah The Winds of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson I gave it a week 3.5 out of 5 it was yeah. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Wings of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.